Whoa guys, there has been a ton of big name stocks hitting 52 week lows and some of them are controversial and some of them are not that controversial, but you may not have even known some of these stocks are actually at 52 week lows kind of given the massive rally we've had for the past month or so. So I'll tell you if they're a massive opportunity or a huge trap and if I have any interest in buying these stocks at all. So make sure you hit that like button if you like me talking about different stocks that I don't normally talk about and kind of what my opinion is on those stocks. That's the easiest and best way to let me know that you like this style video. And some of you guys have actually found my new channel on accident. So I wanted to make sure everybody knew I have a new channel. It's about early retirement and financial independence. So it'll be the pinned comment. Check it out if you want the truth without the hype, the actual truth on early retirement and financial freedom. And guys, everything we know is a lie when it comes to that. So make sure you're subscribed over there if you want the truth about that. All right, so back on track here with this video to be upfront and to kind of cage the discussion here. I really don't care about 52 week lows, just like I don't care about 52 week highs because it tells me absolutely nothing. I've seen it repeatedly over and over and over again where stocks are at 52 week highs and there's still a discount. There's still a bargain, even though they're at 52 week highs, basically because they were beaten down so badly, you know, in prior months, prior, you know, prior year in some cases, you know, look at Meta, even when it bounced up to a 52 week high, it was still significantly undervalued as it continued its march up from those kind of 85, $88, whatever the heck it was, whatever the low was in the eighties there, it was still undervalued the first time it hit a 52 week high and kind of vice versa. There's a lot of stocks that will fall 50%, 75% and you're basically making new 52 week low after new 52 week low. And it's still overvalued based upon valuation. So just simply looking at a list like, Hey, these are 52 week lows. Hey, let me go buy all the stocks that are at 52 week lows. They've got to be on steel deal guys. That's not the case at all. Sometimes there's actual problems with the business and you don't want to touch them. Other times, they're still overvalued. And that's more importantly, why we preach valuation on this channel so much. So that way you avoid that kind of trap that kind of comes along with that. So the first stock is Alibaba. All right. Well, it's a Chinese stock first off. And man, if this was an American stock, I'm uh, telling you guys right now, this would be the best value in the stock market period. And it pretty much has been for over a year now, outside of maybe Meta, I, I could definitely make a case that right. there was more. But if this was an American company, it would absolutely be the best bargain in the stock market, but it's not. And you can't just basically say, well, if it was, then I should buy it. No guys, there's a lot more to it than that because it is a Chinese stock. It does have that weird vice structure kind of behind it. That makes it, you know, not as clear cut as owning stock and Amazon, for example, which is kind of the closest comparison, you know, competitor to what Alibaba does. Amazon's definitely there. So you have to take that into account when you're looking at a stock like Alibaba that yeah, it's significantly undervalued. I, I can make a case all day long to buy this stock, but I can also just say it's a Chinese stock. Therefore, I can't view it the same exact way I view the other stocks that we're gonna talk about here today. So you got to take account for that discount. Now for me, I own Alibaba. I think it's a great company. I absolutely think it's completely undervalued. And I think I'm gonna make a lot of money on the stock long-term. However, it is a Chinese stock. So I own Amazon too. And I would never, never, have, you know, one fifth as much of Alibaba as I would Amazon just due to that buy structure and due to some of the other things and kind of some of the stigmas with investors around Chinese stocks. So you have to understand that dynamic. And that's how I choose to kind of mitigate that risk is by position size. Alibaba is a great company. They continue to just do, I don't know, it's one of the best run, if not the best run company in China, despite all the craziness around the government and all the other craziness that's kind of gone on around the stock, they still continue to perform. So with this stock right here, could it be at a buy at 52 week low? Yeah, it absolutely could. I absolutely think the valuation and everything else about it, even with the Chinese discount is really, really cheap, but you have to understand it's a Chinese stock and you're not going to get a meta style run up. You're not going to get a lot of the same passes on a lot of stocks that you would if it was an American stock. So for me, it's a great stock, great value. But if you're not comfortable with Chinese stocks, if you don't understand the vice structure or even know what the vice structure is, VIE, if you don't even know what that is, you don't need to be playing around with that stock specifically. So stock number two would be Walgreens. And guys, I know, no, don't go blasting me here. Whenever I actually sat down to make this list, you know, it was actually at a 52 week low. It has had just a massive, incredible bounce up from when it hit the teens just briefly there. And it's just basically been almost like a rocket ship up. Now it's still beaten down, you know, when you kind of zoom out and look at the bigger chart, you just kind of see the trend line is basically straight down there. And that's because Walgreens has business problems with the business itself. So you've got to understand that with that particular stock, that there are business problems there. Now, I've owned it for a long, long time there. It's part of my dividend portfolio. The dividend yield right now is incredible because it's beaten down so low. But again, 
it's not one of these deals to where, hey, it's just a beat down stock or, you know, kind of like kind of the old man style stocks. Some of the uh, more legacy style stocks have kind of all kind of dipped this year pretty hard in some cases. It's not one of those scenarios. There's an additional kind of thing going on over here where they have business problems. They've had turnover in the C-suite. And we got to see, is this new management team going to be able to execute to a modified new vision for this company or not? That is yet to be seen. There could be a dividend cut coming. There is no indication. They have not said anything. The board has not said anything. There's nothing out there. It's just speculation that there could be a dividend cut. Uh, my opinion on that is, I don't know. I really don't. I own it for the dividend, obviously. How much of a cut are they going to do? It just remains to be seen there. Anybody out there telling you it's going to do this, it's going to do that. They're just simply speculating, which means uh, they're going to be right sometimes, they're going to be wrong sometimes. It's 50-50. Anybody can throw out a speculative bet out there. I'm not doing that. I just want you guys to understand the risk with this stock and understand that there are business problems there, but if they solve them, this stock is going to rock it up hard if they're able to solve those problems. Now, if they're not able to solve those problems, it's it's probably gonna be one of those stocks where it was kind of a value trap per se. And you know, hopefully they're able to maintain the dividend at least to where you can justify owning this stock for the dividend, but you probably won't get an appreciation with that stock. So again, it's risky. Be very, very careful with this one. So stock number three would be Pfizer. That just seems to make the list every month, it feels like. I mean, this stock just continues to go down and continues to go down, obviously during all the illness and all that sort of stuff, it rocketed way up. But hey, it's basically making new low after new low after new low, which a lot of times screams opportunity. But this type of scenario right here with Pfizer, just because it's beat down does not mean it's a great stock for you and kind of allows, this type of scenario kind of allows me to kind of give you guys a good lesson here about understanding what you own before you actually go and buy a stock. And what I mean by that is, to me, Pfizer, I don't know whether I should own it or not because it's outside my circle of competence. I don't understand the stock itself. I don't understand how the you know regulatory environment affects the stock prices of the various drug companies. I don't understand the approval process. I don't understand the business of, hey, drug gets approved here, or reaches this level of approval. How does that affect the bottom line? How does that affect the stock? How does that affect the business at, at its core, at itself? When it's fully approved and it's out there to the public, what does that do to the stock? I just don't understand the business model on an intimate level in order to understand that. And that's a great lesson for all of us as investors, because every single time I have bought outside of my circle of competence, which I have made that mistake a lot of times, guys, <laughs> more than I ever care to admit, it's kind of embarrassing, but I make that mistake from time to time. And every single time I do it, I regret doing it. Even if I made money, matter of fact, past couple of times I've done it, I made a good chunk of money, but it was more luck than anything else because I didn't understand what I owned. I didn't understand when the stock dipped down, was it an opportunity to add more and I should be adding more because it's a great opportunity or is there an actual problem there with the business? Is it something to where I should be bailing? I wouldn't know. So it makes me very, very uncomfortable having these type stocks in my portfolio because I can't identify hype runs. I can't identify opportunities whenever it falls. I can't identify when Wall Street's being dumb or is there an actual problem? I can't confidently identify those and therefore it makes it a terrible stock for me to own because I, there's hundreds of great stocks out there. Why don't I just own one of the stocks in an industry and in a sector that I actually understand? So that way I can accurately identify or more accurately identify an opportunity or a disaster waiting to happen. And I can't do that with Pfizer. So for me, I've got to be completely out of stock. I don't care how low it goes because I don't understand the business. And it's a good lesson for you guys to kind of make sure you understand the business before you buy the company. All right, so kind of onto the more controversial part of our list here. It's a, just a couple of polar opposite type stocks here. Uh, one of them we've actually never discussed on this channel before. So that right there should be interesting as well. But let's dive into these, you know, comment down below if you got issues with what I say, I understand completely. But the next stock is Chevron. Look guys, I understand the case to own oil and gas stocks. I'm not saying they're bad or anything else, or I'm anti, you know, oil and gas stocks or anything else like that. I just personally think from a long-term perspective, I don't see this being a growing industry into the future. I understand a lot of things outside of gasoline, even if the whole world goes EV, which isn't going to happen. We're not going to get the US all the way to all the way to EVs, much less anything else, uh, much less the rest of the world. There's a lot of other things that are made with oil aside from that. I understand they're making a lot of investment, but this is the type company and this is the type stock where there is a lot of capital. And I'm talking hundreds of billions, if not more, to kind of redo a lot of the infrastructure around this. A lot of this infrastructure within oil companies is very, very old. That's definitely a concern for me in regards to the amount of money it's gonna to take to do that. They're already heavily debt laden. And obviously demand is what it is at this stage, you know, for oil. Is it gonna continue into the future? Of course it will. How much is the question and how much, you know, will that continue to decline over the years if we do actually have more of a change away from those fossil fuels? 
I don't know. That's still yet to be seen. And then obviously, like we all know, it's a commodity-based industry. And if you don't understand oil as a commodity intimately, and then how it kind of intertwines with the business there, man, you're in for a lot of trouble there. So one, it's not necessarily out of my circle of competence because I understand the business. But whenever I get down to, do I want an industry and do I want to own a stock in an industry where it's 100% commodity-based, you know, that to me is a little bit scary because I mean, what oil goes down to 50, these, these companies, some of them are going to be in trouble. Some of them are going to be bleeding money out the side. And obviously, you know, if it goes up, obviously you see their profits are through the roof, but man, we've had some wild, wild times the past year, year and a half or so in regards to oil and the commodity of oil. And man, we saw the roller coaster that these stocks went on. So for me, it's just something I just personally don't want to own something like that. It should be a boring dividend stock, but it's anything from a boring dividend stock. So for me, I choose to stay out of these tile stocks and kind of move on to something different. And finally, onto the last one here. Let's see how much comment, how much everything else goes on down in the comment section down there. And the last stock would be Fisker. Look, guys, we all know it. EVs are hard. If Tesla is struggling right now, how the heck do you think Fisker's going to do? And they haven't scaled yet. They're not out of that initial, you know, pain train that is trying to scale and get out of that bottom pit. They are at the very, very, very beginning of that. Oh, and by the way, they're at the very beginning of that during a time where money's not cheap. They can't go out there and get unlimited funding for virtually nothing, which means they're going to have to dilute you as shareholders because they're really not bringing in any money and they are burning millions upon millions upon millions of dollars worth of cash. So you're going to get diluted if you own the stock. It's going to continue to get worse. The capital requirements to me are just going to be ridiculous. I'm not sure if they're going to get all the way through this high interest rate period over to the other side. Even if they do, we're still not sure. Can they scale or are they going to go under before they're ever actually able to scale? That's not guaranteed. There's a lot of companies we all thought were going to scale and kind of get to the other side and they never got there. And they're not like a Lucid where they have a Saudi backer who's going to come in and inject more cash and kind of save the company per se to help get them through this time period and to help them to get through the scaling process that's incredibly hard. So that means it's on all the backs of the shareholders in order to do this right now, at least for the next year, maybe even longer. And can they last a year? Kind of looking at the cash balances, I'm not sure they can last a year or not. And I'm not sure how much they can dilute shareholders and still continue to go. So for me, I am completely out on this stock. Maybe if they get to the other side of this somehow magically, then there may very well be a play there. But man, right now, the risk of bankruptcy to me is far greater than the risk of making some money on the other end. So for me, the risk reward just isn't there in my opinion. So I'm completely out on this stock. And if you want to learn how to do evaluation, how to create a plan for a stock and be able to talk to me anytime you want, slide in my DMs, jump on our live Q and A's, take five courses for free, use our stock analyzer tool for free and be a part of the best six, seven and eight figure discord out there. And so much more guys, make sure you check out the pinned comment down there and see if a membership's right for you. And I may have left a gift or two for those of you guys that stuck around through the video to the end. And click this video here if you want to see exactly what I'm buying in this market. And click here to see my exact plan for this market. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.